right, Rafael, ¿cómo estás? You all right? Todo bien, todo bien. Let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. Um, I, I got to talk to, I got to talk to, to, to Danny first. Danny, wow. Yeah, just wow. <laughs> That's, you know, the, the first thing that I got to say, just wow. Just you know, you. and, and, and I, I'm pretty sure that you're absolutely, you know, uh, proud of, 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 you know, what your brother did and what it was done on the, on the home, oh, on the home movie, because I just think it's an, impact, brother, yes, yes. Yeah, it's an impactful, yeah, it's an impactful, it's an impactful story, you know, um, so, you know, uh, how did, did the story came about? What triggered it? What, why, what made you want to work on this story? It felt, well, a lot of it had to do with just, we'd been making short films for all these years, you know, and it felt like, okay, it's time to kind of accumulate and then and go for a longer one. You know, our, our friend and collaborator, Jim Cummings said, he, he came up and he said, you're killing yourself spending a year and a half on a short film. Why not just kill yourself working on a feature? And I was like, good point, you know? So, so that was part of the idea, the genesis of like, okay, well, I have these other, these sort of, these other stories that I want to tell and let's see if we can put them together and see if, uh, if the flavors mix well. Um, I, I know that the trailer saying, you know, is a Gen, a Gen C, you know, a story on their life, but I think everyone can relate to the characters. It's not just, Gen C, I think everyone right. can 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 you know uh, to their to relate to their situations. I want to talk about obviously Adam Will, but Will did again. He blew it out of the park. Also, how proud are you of your brother? What he did, and why did you put him in the situation? Because <laughs> I, we're not giving any spoilers. It's really complicated what Will had to do. Well, that's, that's what I was asking. Why did you put me in that situation? <laughs> well, that's the reason. You just said it. It's it's a very very complicated role. And, and it, it's a very demanding role with a lot of, of um, fine lines, you know? It's a very difficult kind of line to walk. And, and I knew that Will would be able to do it. I'm gonna jump into Will and Charlie and Jose. Um, mm -hmm. You know, how, how much of their characters is, is something that you related from them or, and how much was just something that you had to prepare yourself, you know, to put yourself in that situation. And I, I wanna jump with Will first because obviously, sure. No spoilers, please, please, but you okay. know, it's difficult. And again, it's so real because uh, I mean, we see it on the trailer, you're a YouTuber. Um, we are all in here. I'm a YouTuber myself, obviously. So right. we all know where we're just going with what we're trying to do, how we're trying to reach our audience. So how did you, how did you show yourself in the character? How did you find yourself when I was you will will work? Yeah, so so I know, I, you know, Danny talked about Adam being kind of the filmmaker version of, of you know, it, it, part of his psyche that could have came out onto the page was Adam. And I think like, for me, it was kind of the actor version. You know, it's like, we all struggle with like, doing the art, doing the marketing, doing this and that, trying to make your thing good, trying to make it, you know, this, just that whole kind of crazy struggle we put ourselves through on the plight, if you will. That's just sort of easy to slip into and connect with that sort of self doubt. And then the moments of the ecstasy and everything in between, that was definitely something that was, that I could connect with. And just being really sort of, uh, you know, obsessed and feeling kind of isolated sometimes in that pursuit. And then, so that was kind of there to begin with. And then just trying to investigate all the sort of more demanding emotional things that I had an experience became the real bigger challenge. Shirley, uh, your character, how did you relate to it? How did you prepare for it? Yeah, I think in terms of just who Krista is, I, I think Danny kind of uh, actually wrote Krista with kind of me and my personality and, and my high school experiences in mind. So I also, like Krista, I was also a theater kid in high school. Um, and I think in terms of Krista's personality, especially in the beginning, she's very um, bubbly and outgoing and she loves spending time with her friends, which is something I think that I can relate to. Um, and also like a lot of her wardrobe and clothes, like her cherry earrings and all these little, like the way that she expresses herself through style was very much how I was in high school. And like a lot of those clothes are from my personal wardrobe. Um, and I think something that you were talking about too, in terms of that, you know, this is like kind of a, a Gen Z story, but there's elements that everyone can relate to is this idea for me that with Krista, like she's growing up and kind of stumbling through life and, and figuring out who she is and stumbling through her first love and um, figuring out who she is and who she wants to be and, and growing up. Like, I think that that's kind of something that everyone can relate to. Um, I was, I had just turned 18 when I was, uh, filming Beast Beast and so I could really relate to a lot of those feelings but in terms of I think what I struggled with was um, kind of like what Will said like things I'd never experienced for but I guess the bright side of that was that Krista had never experienced that and also um, 
she had never expected to experience, I think, certain things that she has to go through in the film, um, at least dramatically. And for me, that was kind of unlocking, you know, the angst and um, the hardness that comes out of, of, of the experiences that she has. And then finally, at the end of it, finding this place of maturity and like, where does that sit in who Krista is and, and where does that realistically sit in who, who she is and who she becomes from this experience? Um, I think for me that those were the challenging elements because um, I think they set, sit less naturally with who I, I was, but um, yeah, I think that that's what I was working towards. Yeah, Jose? <laughs> Let's say your yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, that was really good to hear. Um, so Nito and I are alike because we both skateboard and being skateboarder, it's kind of like there's a certain lifestyle that goes with it. You're in the streets a lot. You're having fun. You're climbing stuff. Um, and so that was something that was really similar with um, Nito and I was like that skateboard kind of lifestyle and mentality of just like adrenaline through just riding the skateboards, you know, so fun. So. Um, yeah. Rafael, you're muted. Yeah, I, I related I related a lot to, to Nido. I got a skateboard right here, which is like a oh, nice. yeah, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> you don't like see it, it's on the corner. <laughs> but I, I related, I, I again, I related a lot to Nido, a bunch of stuff, just, just that and the whole, you know, persona. But I just think that, and I, and I, I wanna ask, I wanna ask both Shirley and Jose, and this is obviously props to Danny for the direction, but um, did you guys work together before? Did you? How much did you rehearse? Because the chemistry between the two of you was so awesome. I, I felt it felt so cute and so you know so there, so relate again relatable to any type of couple. Not just not just like Charlie said, you know, my first relationship. It just felt everything felt relatable. So did you guys work? You know, did you rehearse everything? Did you work before in the past together? Because again, the two of you, again, I get props to the direction obviously for, for Danny, but that but the, the chemistry between uh Charlie and Jose was really good. Yeah, I mean, Jose and I had never worked together before. I think Danny kind of put the two of us together and he created these environments before filming where we kind of got to know each other as friends. And I guess that kind of like simulated things that Krista and Nito end up doing. But I think the first time we met, like we all got tacos at a place near uh, the Vanishing Angle studio. And we were all chatting and, and Danny and, and Jose were doing like skateboard tricks. And I was just like clapping, <laughs> like, great job. Um, <laughs> but we, we, we did rehearse, um, I think, um, kind of like the the play like the stage choking scene and then we also rehearsed um the the dance rehearsal scene a little too but actually i guess a lot of the scenes that end up being captured <laughs> hussein i think and i i think like both very much went into it with nerves <laughs> and like yeah. that i think very much comes through with krista and nito it's, it, in a, it's, yeah, jose is jose you're sitting like this you're like yeah because <laughs> it is i just memories you know it's that yeah. nervousness yeah. and then it happens you know it's a feeling yeah. the nervousness yeah. and like i think um that's kind of like where i was always mentally prepping because like every time i hanged out with you before set and we were doing the test footages i knew i was like i'm going to have to kiss her like I just knew I had to. I was like, it's in the script. They were so nervous, dude. Raphael, we yeah. cannot tell you how much of a big deal that was. That was so scary. <laughs> Everybody, it was like it was like I was asking them to jump off a cliff or something. It's like you know what? I, I, I get props to Danny again. I think one of the things that stood out to me is there. There are a mixture of two emotions here. We're dealing with a drama, obviously where Adam is going, and then we're dealing, we're dealing with the. With you know, with this puppy love that we're we we're, 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 we're presenting to you with with your, your Charlie and Jose, and then we don't we don't want to spoil the ending, but then the ending just blew my head. Uh, and so, um, Danny, how how are you able to balance those things? Uh, when, was it tough for you to try to make sure that everything makes sense, that everything just went out and and, and people got a sense of it? Yeah, yeah, that was that was that might have been the the scariest, uh, the actual scariest. That was like. To me, like to you guys, the kiss was the scariest. To me, it was like, will all of these flavors come together, right? Because I, I want, it felt like a big swing, like, oh, how are we gonna even justify Adam's character being one of the leads in the movie? Like, is that gonna feel too jarring or weird? But you're like, no, if you set it up that he feels like he's in the same world as these people. Um, so that was a real, uh, it, it, yeah, th that's a great question because like you're kind of putting your finger on something that was 
kind of the, the, the biggest challenge for me going into it w with the screenplay, with the filming of it, and especially with the editing of it is balancing mm -hmm. the tones, right? Because, because it's always nice. You got to have like the light fun. I want it to feel fun. I want it like mm -hmm. when I'm being told a story, even if it's a tragic story, it needs to be like, you know, like human humanity is so uh, varied. It's so eclectic. Like our emo emotional landscape can just go wild in the course of an afternoon. And so I wanted the movie to reflect that. And, and, and there should be these like harrowing, really scary moments. And then two scenes later, we're laughing again, you know? That was part. That was part of the experiment, frankly. Yeah, I want to jump back to, to Will before I let I love the other you go. It's been a really fun interview. We, we haven't we're laughing here, but it's really I absolutely love the movie and it's, I I think it's really but perfectly balanced. So, Will, you. your character again is frustrating to me. It was really frustrating. Uh, Adam is it's, it's a frustrating character. You know, I, I I completely understand what he's doing, where he's going, uh, how. You know, how were you able to manage him? That's a good question. I think um, I think in an ideal world, your character kind of manages you, you know, as an actor. You try to show up and give your sort of lo your life over to what is necess needed on the day. And the kind of character takes you if you can kind of get to that place. So uh, that's always kind of the journey. So I think, I mean, ultimately it was like, you do all the normal acting homework you can do. You try to open yourself up to like the spirits and kind of just like throw caution to the wind in front of the camera, more or less. And trust that like, if you really go, go take the leap, something's gonna happen that's truthful. And um, when you got a good script like we had and you have good scene partners and you have great editors, they kind of help craft and thread the story to make it real, you know, logical. So it's like, you just kind of try and go 100% turn it on a dime every time, you know, you're asked to do something. And um, so, you know, it, it, it's always kind of that, that sort of, that sort of leap. I, I don't know. It's kind of the best I could, I could do, you know. Um, one final question for everyone, open question. Uh, uh, what do you expect people that haven't watched, they didn't watch it in Sundance, because I knew it blew out on, in Sundance to, to get out of it. So I want to start, I want to maybe start with, with Daddy first. What mm. do you expect people to get out of this story once they see it? Yeah, I mean, the, the approach was let's, let's open up a traumatic event like that, which we see every day on the news, if you're looking, um, and let's remove all the politics of it and let's just focus in on the humanity of it. Yeah. And so, so if, and then, and then the idea is like, let's take this traumatic thing that happened and look and examine it from three different angles. And then not only see what led to this happening, but see the rippling effects outside of it. So hopefully it just, uh, I don't know, like any, any great film in my mind will just make you think about the world a little bit differently. So hopefully it does that. Well, I would say, you know, the only thing I would add to that is like, I hope that that dialogue happens internally in each individual audience member and then externally between audience members afterwards, you know, that's, that's the conversation with yourself and with other people is what is what I think we all sort of aspire to have happen from the film. Charlie. Yeah, I, I think for me, building off that too, I, I hope that people fall in love with these characters, like not just, you know, I mean, I guess it sounds it's self-indulgent, but not just the three of us, you know, but also, you know, everyone else that's a part of the film that you get to see on the screen. Like I have so much fun getting to watch Nito pl like play with all his friends and, 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 and film themselves on the phone. And like, to me, that makes me feel so excited and, and reminds me, especially, you know, uh, right now with being in quarantine, just like what it is to have fun with friends and connect with people. And I hope that people fall in love with these characters first and see their humanity um, as kind of a lens into understanding what they experience. Uh, yeah. We'll say. Yeah, I'd say watching a movie definitely have like I'd like it if like people can like have like a self reflection, see their like situations um, with friends, families, whatever they're in, and to see it from the beginning to the end, and then after seeing it to have like this appreciation of life, to be grateful and to to have the joy of living and just knowing that this is something precious. You know, life is fickle and fragile. It's something that's um, that we can uh, enjoy. Yeah, be grateful, breathing. Well said, well said, here, here. Yeah.
Daddy, yeah. I'm gonna put you in the spot. Can we? I, I love the movie. I want to see more. Can we expect more? I want to see more stories from you. I want to see more. I think yeah. you did. You struck a perfect balance between something cute and something really difficult to handle. So I think. Can we expect more? But I do want to see more, so I hope for more, Danny. I, 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 I don't mean to so. put you in the spot, but I want to put no, you in I the think, spot. I think the aim is to make uh, to tell human stories. You know, I think that's the thing, and that's that's what I feel like we we accomplished. You know, whether whether people like the movie or not, I think we like we really got to show a few people's lives in in, in a way that feels like textured and, and genuine to me. So, um, hopefully, more of that to come. So. Yeah. Thank you again for the, the for the, you for you for your time. It was it's really fun interview. I, I never laughed a lot, but I, I really do did love the movie, and I think it has a lot of heart. And then I, I, he has a serious subject that we're tackling. So you're so I'm gonna congratulate the, the four of you, Danny, Wall, Shirley, and, and I said all of you. They're all of you just killed it. So again, congratulations and thank, thank you for your time. Thank you so Thanks, much. Rafael. All right. Rafael. Thanks.